Hi, Travis Hesme here from Industry Week. I'm reporting from IMTS 2014. I'm standing here with David McPhail, uh, CEO and President of Memex. Um, so I keep uh, all day long, all week long so far, I guess, I've uh, been noticing these digital mode effects. This is what everyone's talking about as everything's going on. Um, the, the digital world, the software world, and the manufacturing world are kind of merging. And it's kind of uh, a seamless integration of the two worlds at, at large right now. And here you are, uh, knee deep or neck deep I I in this movement. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more uh, about what you do um, and what you're contributing to that to that movement. Well, Memex is a manufacturer of hardware and software, and what we do is we we take the disconnect, the traditional disconnected manufacturing model, and move it into the connected manufacturing model. We have hardware and software, and basically we we calculate overall equipment effectiveness or efficiency. And we tie profitability and productivity directly together. They're intrinsically tied to each other, and that's what we enable with our technology. Okay. Um, how does that work in the actual manufacturing uh, area, though? Um, does everybody, they're doing everything they can to drive up productivity, to drive down or kill downtime, uh, all those things. What does um, software uh, like this uh, and programs like this, what does it really do for manufacturers? Well, the first thing you have to do is understand that we solve the last meter problem. So without the data, without data, you can't have data-driven manufacturing without data, right? It's a pretty, pretty simple concept. Uh, so what it does for manufacturers is it actually shows them what they don't know, uncovers the hidden factory, and allows them to produce more product, more profitable, with the same level of effort, same people, same equipment. Okay. I, I guess what's the payout that you can expect? Because at, at this point, um, you have an established manufacturing, and they're doing it all old school. They have everything as lean as they can get. They have everything as refined as they can get. Um, you bring in this software. Are they, they going to turn up really good uh, results from it? Yeah. Our typical return on investment is three months or less. The, oh, average, okay. the average customer. I just want to talk about, about productivity. Oh, okay. um, to how much, uh, wh what can people expect? Like a, a couple of percent um, in oh, increase? Oh no, it's much higher than that. What I always ask this question when we start with a, uh, with a customer, I say, what's your current uh, level of efficiency? The answer I typically get 60 to 65 percent. The average answer is really 32 percent. So it's almost like fine. So we take customers from 30 to 32 percent and move them to world class at 85 percent. It's almost like finding an additional factory and a half capacity. Okay. Uh, they're, they're not small numbers. Yeah. And so I guess when factories, uh, they're chasing down every half percentage, they go, this is, this is a pretty big bump. Right. Well, typically 5 to 10 percent of that comes just from being invo involving the shop floor with the top floor. So in other words, having the operator be engaged, have the operator be part of the solution rather than just pointing out that there's a problem, having the operator be proactive and, uh, and actually be able to, to affect change on the shop floor. And we give them the tools to do that. I guess that's another trend that's really everywhere here, from, the, from robots to machine tools to, to 3D printers and CAD. It's like everything is connected. Uh, the machines are connected. The people are connected. Everything is kind of working together in a big web. And it seems like that's what you're talking about here. It's like connecting all of the people with the data, connecting all the data with all of the machines. So you get like a, a really good view of like what's going on. Correct. Um, the one thing though that we shouldn't overlook about is the complexity to connect legacy equipment. So even though a company would come here today and buy a brand new Mazak or Rotuma machine with an MT Connect option, chances are it's gonna go back into their plant and they're gonna have 19 or 20 other assets with no ethernet jack. So the question is, what how, how do they bring the same level of connectivity from the show that they just saw here or the machine that they just bought into their shop floor? And what we do is we solve the last meter problem. So we actually take a piece of hardware we en and actually enable the machine to speak intelligently about how to make more money and more production. And that's really the, the, the kicker. That's the piece that's been missing for a long time. Understood. So I guess we can close out. Um, like a really broad question uh, at the end. Um, so uh, if I were a manufacturer, been around for generations and doing everything the hard way, I guess all manual um, uh, data collection, all these things, nothing's connected, and I wanted to jump up into the 21st century, where do I start uh, and what am I looking for? Uh, it's start with actually having the data on your shop floor actually be contextualized and put into a database. In other words, have the data that, that machines are creating right now that you're not tracking, actually track it. So connect them. I mean, the f it starts with connectivity. The connectivity is the most important piece. It enables the foundation by which all of these other applications can consume the data and create value. For example, if you calculate overall equipment effectiveness or keep or tack time, it requires the data from the shop floor. If you don't have the data, you're just you're throwing darts. You're just guessing. Excellent. All right, that'll do us. Um, again, this is Travis Hessman reporting from IMTS 2014. And I'm here with Memex. Thanks.